Ah, finally, a razor enclosure. Two of them. So yes, these are the two new Razer Tomahawk enclosures, a mini ITX version and a full-size ATX mid-tower. Yeah. Ah, the rival three wireless. Nice. You get up to 400 hours of playtime with two AAA batteries at 1000 Hz, that's plenty of time to own in games with a good shape, user-defined weight and a mouse that is also Bluetooth ready. The SteelSeries Rival 3 Wireless, check it out below. In this video I want to mainly focus on the Razer Mini ITX Tomahawk, simply because the ATX model is just a slight redesigned, rebranded Landcool 2 mesh from Lian Lee, which is a fantastic enclosure in its own for the $89 asking price, but Razer has definitely stepped up that uh, price tax because the ATX model will sell for $199 and the mini ITX model for $179. So those prices, whew, not very competitive, I will say, especially the ATX model. Just get the Landcool 2 mesh if you can find one for $89 because at $199, the Tomahawk ATX I mean, if you're really into Razer, sure, but the ITX model, that's what I'm interested in because that's going to be like the Razer original design. It's not a rebrand of a existing Lee and Lee tower. Actually, after having looked over my Lee and Lee TU150 review, this is the exact same frame with modifications uh, for the top. So the cables are no longer routed through the top channels down there on the side. So you can have space for radiators there and the power supply mount has been moved down. but. Otherwise, it looks like it's the exact same frame. So here, it kind of falls on the same suite, but with the design, it's slightly different, still very elegant, but price point is not competitive at $179. But when we compare it to some unique ITX options that came out this year, like the NR200, which is incredible for the $79 price point, extremely optimized, check out our full review. Plus we have the new Fantex Shift Air 2, which is awesome again, the towering form factor, really optimized for airflow for both the GPU and CPU. Luckily the Tomahawk ITX has a few tricks up its sleeve, so it's not completely left in the dust, but simply from a price perspective, I wish they were a bit more aggressive. For example, the frame is made entirely of steel. For the price point, I was hoping to find some aluminum pieces, but on the good side, build quality feels really good. Everything feels well put together. The swivel side panels are on both sides, by the way, so make sure to do a good cable management job, but the glass is very tinted, so you're not gonna see much uh, of anything if the cables are black anyway. They're also removable for easy installation and attached with magnets and tiny clips into the frame, so they stay securely in place. Some unique design elements in here include that square ventilation pattern, both in the top and on the sides for the front panel. A staple for all Razer cases, as far as I know, have been the LED strips for the underglow effect. And here we have this massive diffusion layer, so the lighting is incredibly soft and vibrant. You can customize it through Synapse software, but unfortunately, as you can see here, the Razer logo at the front always stays green. That is not adjustable. I don't get it. Why limit the customization of RGB elements on the enclosure, especially now because have this beautiful blue underglow, but this bright green snake in the front. They don't match. The Razer logo also cannot be turned off while you can unplug the USB 2 port for the underglow. So you can either turn it off through the software or just unplug it from your motherboard. The IO is at the top with two USB 3 ports, power reset, separate audio connectors, which I appreciate, and a USB-C Gen 2 with a nice long cable for the motherboard. I appreciate that the top and the front panels sit on clips and are easily removable. So for the front panel, you can see we have removable dust filters on each side of the ventilation. Although let's be real, this front panel is a complete choking hazard, especially after that filter is installed. And that is because we have a front uh, intake fan that's only 120 millimeter, by the way, with its own fine dust filter. So that's an additional restriction over there. Let's be real, no air will enter through that front intake because of so many barriers. We have the dust filter on the fan, we have the dust filters 
on the panel and the panel itself is completely choking. As for the top, we have a removable fan bracket that supports up to a 240 mm radiator with their supportive fans. Unfortunately, no 140 mm fan mounts anywhere on this enclosure and you can also mount a 120 mm fan for the rear. I appreciate that you can install the fan bracket upside down, meaning the fan and the radiator will both be inside the frame versus having the fan bracket in its default configuration where it's sandwiched between the fan and the radiator, which I find really difficult to install. So just flip it around. As for the interior, one major red flag that popped into my head was the bottom intake. It's good that you can install 120 mil fans there, two of them, and two SSDs in there as well if you don't want airflow, but notice there is no dust filter. So if you do install fans in there, it's great for GPU cooling and it's great for intake because the front intake is completely blocked, but there's no dust filtration on an intake area, which is massive at the bottom for an ITX enclosure. You know, it's gonna get dusty in like a month. What are they thinking? As for the rest of the hardware support, we have SFX or SFX L power supplies. You can see that bracket sitting right beside the motherboard, but with plenty of height, so you can install a radiator above it. If you're air cooling, CPU towers up to 165 millimeters are supported, which is great. Massive CPU tower heat sinks in here are not a problem. And as for GPU support, up to 320 millimeters are compatible. That is, if you don't install that front fan, because if you do, minus 25 millimeters. Looking at the back, I appreciate the slight angular frame at the front where you can stash all your cables. And this is also where an additional two and a half inch SSD or hard drive can be installed. But I would advise against it, especially when it comes to ITX, just to avoid uh, you know, additional cable management stress. But in my experience, cable management in this case is pretty straightforward, especially with an SFX unit because there's a little bit of space uh, right outside the power supply to bunch up your cables. But it is because of the power supply location, you encounter some little iffy compatibility and bad optimizations of the space. So number one, that power extension cable is kind of weird because in my configuration with the power supply fan facing down towards the GPU, I could not uh, route the cable because it's way too bulky and it's exiting towards the right side in, in this configuration. So I had to actually rotate the power supply so it is facing up for a cable to fit in place. Furthermore, because of this location, the tubes on your all-in-one cooler or radiator have to exit near the back, not the front. At the front, they simply don't fit. And this is also a pretty bad optimization of space because that power supply section cannot be converted to support ATX units. So for example, if you're not water cooling, then you could utilize that space for an ATX power supply, but you know, the case is not built for that. It's SFX only. Now, on the one hand, this is exactly the type of ITX case I love working with. There's plenty of space for a large CPU tower heatsink, lots of room for cable management, and overall, it's an easy case to work in, unlike something really compact where you spend like five hours trying to figure out the exact assembly procedure. Here, it's identical to any mid-tower, but everything is just shrunk. But on the other hand, for $179, I feel like the ITX community would expect more in terms of optimization of space, giving you more options for power supply, especially maybe more options for storage as well, because the case isn't very small. It's close to almost 30 liters. Plus no fans are included and no dust filtration at the bottom. And I find that ridiculous because of how much dust filtration there is at the front. In terms of cooling, it's not a chart topper, but it doesn't perform bad either, given it's uh, like a choking nature at the front. Uh, I disabled the fan and it literally did nothing. So to wrap things up, at $179, this thing is overpriced. There's the razor tax in there somewhere, especially because the tu 50 which is the same size as this guy and can support massive CPU tower heat sinks and the same length GPUs, is $99, so significantly cheaper. If you want the water cooling support, if you can find the NR200 from Cooler Master, definitely go for that. The Shift 2 Air seems to be a really good option for the $99 price point as well, for that towering form factor and really good GPU cooling. It's not a loss for Razer though, because I hope that with this next iteration of updates, we can get some refinements here, like an RGB logo at the front, a dust filter for the bottom, and maybe price reduction as well. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.